Hello and welcome to this session celebrating the launch of the YGL class of 2023. My name is Kule Galma and I'm coming to you from the World Economic Forum's studio in Geneva, Switzerland. Today has been almost one year in the making. We have spent many months scouring the world of leadership in search of the game changers, disruptors and visionaries under the age of 40 who are leading their countries, serving their communities and launching groundbreaking initiatives to inspire new ways of social change. And today, we are so excited to welcome and honor the nearly 100 new changemakers selected to join the Young Global Leaders Class of 2023. This year's class represents what is needed most today, hope, conscientiousness, and ingenuity to change the world for the better. The World Economic Forum's latest Global Risks Report highlights that the world is facing a unique and uncertain decade ahead. With the return of older risks such as inflation, trade wars and social unrest that is being amplified by new challenges such as unsustainable debt levels, low growth and climate change impacts. This convergence of risks, however, is not only creating a turbulent landscape for leaders, but also an opportunity for them to demonstrate their role in building a more inclusive and resilient world. And that's what these young global leaders we are celebrating today are capable of. The leaders in this year's class come from 45 countries, 44% of them are women and 62% are from the Southern Hemisphere. From Ecuador to Vietnam, Kosovo to Saudi Arabia, these leaders come from all walks of life and collectively embody a powerful truth that each of us has a role to play in making our communities and the world a better place. We are incredibly inspired by the class of 2023, and we hope that as you follow along today, you will be too. Before we jump in, I wanna take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for taking the time to participate in this virtual experience. To stay up to date with all the latest happenings, follow the official hashtag YGL23. And to see the full list of new class members, visit our website, younggloballeaders.org. And don't forget to tag us in your posts on social media using the handle at YGL Voices on Twitter or the Forum of Young Global Leaders on LinkedIn. Without further ado, I'm going to invite the president of the World Economic Forum, Borge Brenda, to weigh in on the significance of today's celebration. Over to you, Borge. Thank you, Kula. Hello, everybody, watching this address from around the world. I'm really thrilled to address you today as we celebrate the incredible accomplishments of the Young Global Leaders Class of 2023. This community, founded nearly two decades ago, has brought together some of the most innovative and determined minds of our time to drive positive change across the globe, really walking the talk. We are facing, as we all know, unprecedented challenges in our world today. The pandemic exposed the fragility of our global systems, and we are grappling with economic, social, political, and environmental pressures on a scale we have never seen before. On climate change, we know that our planet is on fire and we have to act now. The cost of inaction far exceeds the cost of action. But in the face of these challenges, this community has shown us the power of unity and determination in shaping brighter future for all. We need to create more silver linings. Through their collaboration and fresh thinking, they have demonstrated a deep understanding of the opportunities that today's pressing problems present. They are an engine for positive change, and we rely on their leadership to support us in driving public-private cooperation in the global public interest. The World Economic Forum and our partners are committed to supporting young global leaders in their quest for a more equitable and inclusive world. By providing access to our activities, we hope to inspire them to transform their ideas into reality and build a better future across all boundaries. In the past year, this community has shown us what is possible when we come together to champion change. They have unveiled plans to revolutionize health services in rural and refugee communities, 
galvanized private sector action on pollution and achieve more together than they could do alone. This is a message for all of us. Let's take a moment to recognize and celebrate the exceptional work of the Young Global Leaders Class of 2023. Your dedication and hard work have not gone unnoticed, and we are excited to continue working alongside you in the future. Together, we will continue to spark the flames of innovation and create a brighter future for all. Thank you so much for joining us, Borgay, and for highlighting what the Young Global Leaders community means to the World Economic Forum. It's always so inspiring to learn how this community continues to challenge the status quo to advance the Forum's mission of improving the state of the world. Now we'll turn to Wadia Etamza, head of the Forum of Young Global Leaders, as he speaks to a few current members of our community and listen in as they reflect on how being part of this community of outstanding people fuels hope and keeps them going. Over to you, Wadia. Thank you, Kule, and hello. Welcome to all of you watching us live for this class lounge. My name is Wadi Ait Hamzan. I'm the head of the Forum of Young Global Leaders. I'm super excited to welcome and recognize the nearly 100 leaders who are joining our community today. The Forum of Young Global Leaders was created in 2004 to help the world meet increasingly complex and interdependent problems. The aim was to create a proactive multi-stakeholder community of the world's most dynamic and innovative leaders to inform decision-making and mobilize transformation. And over the years, young global leaders have done just this. From courageous journalism to uh, pressing, uncovering most pressing political and human rights issues, to entrepreneurs transforming the way we work with technologies and everything in between, YGLs have always been doing great. This year's class is no different, as it is packed with brilliant minds and passionate leaders from business, civil society, and academia. Before we speak to a few of these new YGLs, we will talk to some long-time members of our community who will shed the light on how our program has accelerated their leadership journeys. Up first, we are joined by Nema Kasiji. Nema, welcome. Thank you so much, Wadia. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today, and congratulations to the class of 2023. Can you please tell us more about what do you do? Uh, I'm a pediatric surgeon and a public health specialist, and my focus right now is building health systems to deliver surgical services in refugee and rural uh, contexts. Excellent, thank you. Up next, Fahed, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Adia, and thank you uh, to the World Economic Forum, and congratulations to all the young global leaders uh, on their selection. Uh, my name is Fahad Adbay from Saudi Arabia. I'm an YGL alum, and I work for uh, Aramco as the Senior Vice President for Strategy and Market Analysis. Excellent. Thank you, Fahad. Last but not least, Al Anoud, welcome. Thank you, Adi, and Alf Mabrouk. Congratulations to all the newly joined Young Global Leaders. As you can see, we cannot contain our smiles. We're very excited for you. And yeah, we're super excited to have this class of um, YGLs. And uh, to quickly introduce myself, my name is Al Anoud Al Thani. I'm the Deputy Chief Executive Officer at the Qatar Financial Center Authority. And as you know, it's an underrepresented uh, uh, industry globally. So I'm proud to be uh, the youngest and the only female uh, to ever join the executive committee team in Qatar. Excellent. Congrats. Mm -hmm. So, Nima, you've been part of this community since 2017, mm -hmm. uh, if, if I'm right. Can you tell us what learnings uh, have you got from the community? And before that, where were you when you learned about your selection? So I was at the hospital, I just, just finished seeing patients and I was just about to go to the operating room. I quickly checked my email and there was the email, I'm not sure if you're still sending emails. We do, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> among other things. <laughs> and I wasn't quite sure what, is, what it was when I initially looked at the email and then I scrolled down uh, and learned more and it was really uh, very exciting and I, it was such a privilege and an honour 
to, to join the extra, extraordinary group of, of, of young leaders. Um, so that, that's, that's my story on how I found out and Excellent. how surprised I was. Super. Fahd, what about you? Where, well, where were you? <laughs> I was camping in the desert. Oh, God. It was a quiet <laughs> night, and I only had access to uh, phone calls, uh, little or lack of data. And then I got a call from a friend telling me, you didn't check your WhatsApp. I told him, what's happening? He said, you've been selected as a young global leader. If I had to climb uphill just to get better <laughs> data <signal>. reception, <laughs> and then I was inundated with so many uh, congratulatory uh, messages. But what was interesting to me is going from that quiet uh, place to, you know, uphill where you were flooded with information. And to me, that contrast represents the leadership journey we took uh, at the YGL. You go from self-reflection and being, uh, talking to yourself, uh, all the way to engaging with this global community. So, uh, I still remember vividly my feelings at that moment and the excitement thereafter. Super. Al Anud, you, you have a special story because you've been engaged with the forum for a long time with the Shapers community. So I'm sure you knew many YGLs and in the community because of the relationship we have between the two communities. Correct. So how was your, your feeling when you were selected and where were you? So um, I was in the office. I received a phone call. Uh, telling me that I was selected for the Young Global Leaders. I couldn't contain my excitement, <laughs> but I tried to act cool on the call. <laughs> so uh, so I, was, I, I still remember that day, but it was very special because, I mean, I've been a founding member of the Global Shapers community, and it was almost 10 years ago, 12 now. Um, and we always saw the Young Global Leaders as a selected group of young leaders who are affecting change in their local communities, regional or global ones. And they were role models to us. So it was really more of a responsibility that I felt uh, once I received the news. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I looked at it from a completely different perspective. It's being a responsible leader and ensuring that I hold the title uh, with, the, with the dignity, respect, and uh, the, the responsibility that it gives each and every one of us, uh, whether you're an existing alumni or a newly joined uh, young global leader. I like that, the responsible leadership. Mm -hmm. notion of being a YGL. Mm -hmm. uh, Niamh, you know, we challenge YGLs to achieve the potential of their leadership. Mm -hmm. And we challenge them to realize that, mm -hmm. that potential leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, how how uh, have you leveraged the community uh, to enrich and accelerate your leadership journey? And how did you join forces with other YGLs to do, to, to do more than what we can do to alone? Um, so YGLs and, and fellow YGLs, it's, it's, it's a community. It's, it's family, I would even say. Um, and all of the big initiatives that I have carried out in the past few years, I have re I've re really received uh, support from fellow YGLs. Um, so taking the example of opening the first operating room in a refugee camp for children, YGLs were instrumental and so we launched that initiative back in 2020 at Davos, and multiple YGLs were there for me, including Simon, may he rest in peace, uh, including Jaime, including Akim, um, Mariah was also there. And so it's, it's a community that is diverse. You'll meet people from all walks of life, you know, from artists, musicians, to, to presidents, to uh, scientists and doctors, and as a doctor, we tend to stay in our in silo, a <laughs> in a bubble. You know, I'm, I'm mostly in a hospital or in the operating room. And so being part of the YGL community really broadened, uh, broadened my outlook. And uh, YGLs have been instrumental in, in accelerating or even propelling some of the initiatives that I've led in the last few years. Uh, and so I'm very, very grateful for that. And, uh, and um, I'm, I'm hoping the same, the, the current class will have similar experiences. And we are grateful for the work that all YGLs are doing in around the world, especially in Kakuma, where we have a special relationship mm -hmm. with, with the, com the local community. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Fad, how about you? How, how, how the community has, has helped you to uh, be a better leader? Well, there are a uh, twofold impact of the community. The first is the network. Uh, and you, all of a sudden, you're part of a much bigger network that spans across all continents and different sectors. But the other benefit as well is uh, working with that network and the World Economic Forum, you're exposed to 
new verticals uh, in your knowledge domains. Uh, you're also uh, exposed to geographical uh, insights about different countries and regions and what uh, you know, others have succeeded in or, or not, uh, as well as uh, latest thinking on issues and uh, strategies and uh, uh, what everyone is challenged with. And you realize that uh, whatever you're going through, there are so many people that are going through. So you can benefit a lot from uh, their mistakes uh, and the shortcuts that they've done. You can synergize and capitalize on resources. I remember uh, in one of the programs that we were about to launch uh, related to digital oneness, you know, we started that program in the company and then I brought it to one of our summits here and presented it to some of the YGLs and I realized that I was presenting it to advisors and coaches who helped me not only shape our thinking around it, but even scaling it beyond uh, our country. So in addition to the network, I think the intellectual part uh, and the knowledge you gain is, is quite helpful for you as a leader. It is also an opportunity for self-reflection. Uh, you're working with like-minded people uh, who are going through uh, a lot of what you're going through. And you realize that you develop some you know, uh, comfort zone with them through the educational modules, through the engagements in these summits. And with time, you realize that I have a circle of trust mm -hmm. that is much bigger than uh, what I had previously. Hmm. So it's about, it's about the platform of safe space mm -hmm. of leaders. And, and, and you know, to the audience that are watching us, many or a lot of people, they think that uh, you know, when you are at, at positions of power, uh, that you have many people that help you, it's right, but you're alone. Mm -hmm. And the community gives that platform that is a safe space to, to, to enrich your insights, but also to challenge each other. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's really powerful. Thank mm -hmm. you for, for sharing, uh, Fat. Al Anoud, uh, you just uh, returned from uh, Nayang Technological University where we had an educational module for YGLs, but also you hosted many YGLs and myself. Uh, during the FIFA World Cup in, in Qatar, uh, which was really uh, an amazing experience. How has been being part of uh, the YGL community helped you at work and also to be a better leader? So I think building upon uh, what my colleagues have mentioned, we are a social network, a very diverse group of young leaders who are already affecting change in our communities, who are already innovating and uh, finding solutions to solve the biggest problems in the world. But we're doing it either individually or via our organizations or looking like within our countries and our regions. Now the power of the Forum of the Young Global Leaders is that it's a global uh, network. It's a network where if we put our hands together, we can solve the global problems because we cannot do it individually or looking inwardsly in our own countries and organizations. Now, the forum, as you mentioned, uh, basically provides a lot of opportunities for young global leaders to engage, whether it's official learning journeys where host countries and host YGLs uh, create a learning environment uh, to showcase what their culture, country or projects uh, that are being done to solve some of the major issues, or the educational modules where you go expose yourself to different people thinking about one topic and a completely different perspective, but you learn from each other and you grow and you try to find solutions or come up with projects to solve these issues. So Nanyang was about reglobalization on sustainability and equity. It was very unique because we were a, such a diverse group that each region saw it from a completely different perspective. <laughs> and that's the power of such a global network. It's because together, once we understand our differences, we can solve problems. Now, hosting the World Cup was very unique and special to my heart because it was 12 years in the making. It was a historic time for Qatar. It was the first time that an Arab country in the history of FIFA gets the chance to host the World Cup, to host the world with our diversity, our differences in one country for one cause, which is football and sports. So sports was a unifying force that brought different people from all over the world to Qatar to enjoy the games. But it was an opportunity for us as young global leaders, and my colleagues are not with me today, but Ahmed and Abdurrahman from Qatar, we've put a program together to ensure that this global network can learn about our culture, about our religion, about our values as an Arab world. But also, we went uh, through an educational uh, journey where we took them to some of the landmark 
projects that Qatar uh, boasts to the world, which is how Qatar is leading in the educational front, how we're investing in, in technologies to solve the transition from fossil fuel to greener energy, uh, uh, to cleaner energy. Um, and I mean, the list can go on. Fat, was she a great host? <laughs> she was amazing, <laughs> and the food was great, and the whole country was enjoying uh, hosting people uh, and, uh, during the World Cup. We enjoyed it a lot, and we have... And really, we, we've seen what, what the word hospitality means. Amazing memories, let me put yeah. it that way. Thank you for, Thank you. for hosting YGLs and hosting us uh, Al-Anoud. Nema, you mentioned before, or earlier, the, you know, the YGL committee has been a source of, uh, of support to your ongoing initiative in, mm -hmm. in, in Kakuma. Mm -hmm which is something that has started as a YGL learning journey uh, a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, if I remember, it was in 2018. In 2018. 2018. Wow, that was a long time one ago. In 2019. That was before COVID, so it's before a long COVID, time ago. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, we can see that really the success of your initiative was because of being part of this community. Absolutely. And so you've been engaged really, truly, and took the maximum from this community. Mm -hmm. So what advice do you have to the new class uh, on how they should be engaged in the community and how they should make the most of their YGL experience? So my advice, number one, is, is engage, engage fully and, and give. Just give unconditionally. I, I think that's, that's what I found is, is the best approach. Um, secondly, make those connections, those human connections with fellow YGLs. You know, my best friends are, are YGLs. The people I adore most in, in, in this world are YGLs. Um, so take that time, take that time during that first year especially to just build relationships with fellow YGLs, connect with them on a human level and try to move through different different sectors. So if, if you're a scientist, well, you know, connect with the musician. Uh, if you're a politician, connect with, with the doctor that you may uh, never see. And, and then following that, then you can go to the ed educational modules, which are very, very useful. And that's another opportunity to, uh, to connect more deeply in, uh, with, with fellow YGLs. And, and lastly, just enjoy the experience. You know, the, the years will go by very, very quickly. <laughs> uh, so just take the time to enjoy being a YGL and, and enjoy the fact that you can land in any country in the world and you have a friend, uh, you have a family member through this YGL community. And it's interesting because some of them I see them more than I see my mom. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, it's a reality. <laughs> How about you, Fad? What advice do you have for this uh, class of YGLs? I'm sure all the YGLs are excited right now by the selection, uh, but that's only the beginning. Uh, it's a journey, and you get as much as you invest in it. Uh, mm. and you invest by connecting with people, uh, by going out of your comfort zone, by learning about new things. So this is one aspect. The other aspect is uh, trust the process of, of the YGL journey. Uh, embrace the structure and just be open-minded to any idea uh, that comes uh, to mind. You'll be amazed by how small conversations mm. uh, you know, over lunch or in, in a corridor can scale up quickly mm. to be an impactful uh, program. And the third aspect is uh, abide by the principles of the YGL the generosity, authenticity, uh, respect, and impact. Uh, we can connect and engage all the time and uh, have fun in addition to the many learnings. But if all of this does not translate into results and impact, then that's wasted time and, uh, and energy. Mm. Super. And I know what are your thoughts? What advice you might have I mean, for YGLs? The more you put into it, the more you get out of it, to be honest. And once a YGL, you're forever a YGL. But the newly joined YGLs, it's a three-year program. So make the most out of it. Do engage with the learning journeys. Do attend the educational modules and apply for them. Because those won't be given once you graduate from the program. But the lifelong friendships, some of my best friends who I met two years ago, mm are truly my closest friends today. And it's, it's amazing because we actually share a lot of the same values. Mm -hmm. So despite our uh, backgrounds and where we come from, we really are the same. At the end of the day, we're people. We put our titles behind us. And we're here to really improve the state uh, of the world. And that's why each one of us has been selected as the Young Global Leader, because our work 
is already affecting positive change, socially, economically, politically, environmentally as well. I mean, I was just having a discussion with some of the newly joined YGLs, and some of them were talking about you know, cross-border solutions that they are adapting uh, to local communities, but it's only one technology that's utilized. For example, drones and delivering medicines uh, to areas that are out of reach. So it's, it's really fascinating, and now I have an idea because I can connect them to some of the work we do. And, and this is how you scale ideas and you take them beyond. Uh... Super, thank you. I mean, everything you said is connected to our guiding principles, mm -hmm. authenticity, generosity, mm -hmm. respect, and impact. So thank you for, for joining us. And after listening to these leaders, I'm reminded of the immense power of our community and the collaboration we have. The Forum of Young Global Leaders has created a space where Individuals from diverse backgrounds can come together, support one another, and help bridge divides to create real-world change for the benefit of all. The YGLs we have heard from today have shown us that leadership done, doesn't have to be a lonely journey. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is through connecting with others, sharing our vulnerabilities, and showing up as our true authentic selves that we can truly thrive and make a difference. So thank you so much for joining us and for inspiring the class of 2023. And we can't wait to see you uh, somewhere in the YGL activities. Next, the moment you have all been waiting for, we will hear from some of members of the YGL class 2023. But first, we'll play a short video as an, as an introduction. We live in a volatile world, in a world where change is happening much more rapidly and where the answers of the past are not good enough for today. From here, we're going to face a lot of hurdles, a lot of economic challenges, social challenges, environmental challenges. It's been a really tough, unprecedented few years where not only is the world really volatile, there's been a real breakdown in trust. You really cannot impact change if you're also not sitting at the right tables. And so I think that it's really important to have more youth representation in places of decision making. And so I'm very happy that there is a forum like Young Global Leaders that you know, puts that idea at the center. Getting clear on what we collectively believe is a responsible leader or standard organization. That's what we're trying to do. I come from a country where people don't take you seriously till you're 60. And I feel that the energy and the motivation and the passion of somebody at 20, 30, 40 is unmatched. The best thing about this community is the spark. You meet people from this community and you hear about what they do, their ideas, and that spark is quite inspiring. What I find every time I talk to a YGL is that somebody saw a need and nobody was doing this thing, so I guess I'm just gonna have to do it. It's such an inspirational community of people who have dedicated their lives to solving some of the world's biggest challenges. You have to include youth because you make better decisions. I have young people mentor my board because people are so stuck in their own ways. Right? I've been doing this for 30 years. And it's like, what is your point? You might have been doing the same thing for 30 years. A young person might come in with an idea at the first meeting that can change everything. It's about building a goal bigger than what's on the table. How do we challenge the status quo? How do we grow the horizon in an integrated manner? The voice of youth brings that. As you just saw from that video and heard from Borke earlier, our societies are facing an unprecedented combination of economic, social, political, and environmental pressures. The COVID-19 pandemic heightened uncertainty and highlighted our collective fragility. Through this, we saw YGLs pulling their diverse skills, experiences, and networks to make positive differences in their organizations, communities, and beyond. I'm so excited to speak to three new members of class of 2023 who will shed the light on why their involvement with the YGL community at this moment is needed in the world of today. First, I would like to introduce Margaret Zhang, who's joining us virtually. She is the editor-in-chief of Vogue China. Prior, she wore many hats as a filmmaker, writer, photographer, and consultant. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you We're so much. So happy to be here. Thank you. We're also joined by Richard Ittle, the CEO and co-founder of SkyCell, 
a company that is leveraging technology to deliver more than 200 million vaccines per year to the world. Welcome, Richard. Thank you, Vadia. Finally, we are joined virtually also by Peace Hyde. She's the head of digital media and the West African correspondent at Forbes Africa. She's also the creator and the producer of the critically acclaimed reality TV series on Netflix, Young, Famous and African. Peace is also an Aliko Dangote Fellow, a fellowship program established by the Aliko Dangote Foundation for African Young Global Leaders. Welcome, Peace. So, Margaret, uh, you've, you are part of Class 2023. Uh, yeah. And you become the youngest editor-in-chief of Vogue in 2021 at just 29 years old. A remarkable achievement. Can you tell us a bit more about your journey that, get you, that got you there? Yeah, I've had um, certainly an unconventional career path. I began my life in performing arts, actually, in ballet and theatre and classical music, um, and then at some point fell into the fashion industry as a photographer and a model and a writer while I was studying uh, business school and law school at Sydney University. And at some point in my studies, I realised that I could somehow be this connective tissue between uh, business and creatives, kind of leveraging the amplification and storytelling capacity of culture, not just for commerce, but also for cause. And upon graduating law school, a few years later, I moved to New York as a kind of base for my fashion career as a consultant and photographer, creative director, writer. Um, and at some point I co-founded Background, which was a, at the time a global cultural consultancy and production company where I was kind of bridging Eastern and Western hemisphere across a number of industries, not just fashion, um, not just consumer goods, but also tech and food, um, video gaming, for instance. Um, meanwhile, I was gearing up to direct and write and act in my first feature film which was to be at the time an examination of the condition of womanhood and motherhood in modern day China, which got put on hold by COVID. And then during that time, out of the blue, received a call from Anna Wintour about this Vogue China role. And as you can probably tell, I love a challenge. And so here we are, very honoured to be here. And it has been so great to kind of hear from our YGL alumni about how they were able to connect with so many people from other industries, because that's really kind of the bedrock of, of my whole path to date. So very excited to connect with everyone. Thank you, Margaret. And welcome to the YGL community or family, as we love to say it. Yeah, thank you. Richard, as I mentioned earlier, SkySell offers data-driven container solution that allows uh, pharma companies to optimize their supply chain by reducing and even predicting the risk of delivering sensitive drugs by air. I'm, I'm curious, what inspired you to take this path over 10 years ago? It was not a straight line. <laughs> um, leadership, actually what led me to this was I helped my mentor during your university times who just recently passed away Dr. Hans-Oli Pesalozzi built up an institute that promotes entrepreneurship. And he there challenged me with three questions. So why do you do it? What do you do? And how do you do it? So like use your intellect, your mind, your heart, and then act with your hand. And that became the basis on making the decision what I wanted to do later on in life. And when my co-founder Nico approached me and said he has this piece of technology, we had many avenues to apply, apply it. And, but we thought, okay, pharma, seems like a big challenge that everyone seems to run or have around the world. Mm -hmm. There's more than $35 billion worth of product lost every year. Wow. And at the same time, it's transported in a not sustainable way. 80% of these pharmaceuticals are transported in a throwaway solution, which is landfilled. Mm. And so we thought, what if we could design a container solution that eliminates the loss, but is also cutting out CO2? Wow. So that became, but the origin was this why do you do it? But you, I mean, you make it like seem like so easy to make. <laughs> and now it's a straight line, but it was a path. Excellent, thank you. Peace, you are the, br you are the brain behind Young, Famous and African, uh, and I claimed Netflix. Uh, or it, uh, and it is also the first African uh, reality show that was launched uh, in Netflix. Uh, you know, I'm curious to know uh, I think Eat Peace has... Peace, I don't know if you are with us, if you can hear me. Probably we'll come back, we'll come back uh, to her. I'll turn to you, Margaret. Uh, 
over the last few years, we've seen the fashion industry being challenged to be more sustainable, uh, and social media influencers becoming more increasingly relevant. And as a push for more inclusivity, what is the one leadership threat leaders in your industry must hone for success in the face of this? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the key consideration here is about concrete impact and not just amplification and awareness. I mean, on sustainability and diversity and inclusivity, as you mentioned, we're already aware, right? Everybody's already aware. So what is the next step? What is the actual action that we're taking on? So sustainability as a key, I feel it's important for us to remember that it's not just a marketing ploy. You know, sustainability is also so much bigger than the things that we can see. It's beyond the materials. It's beyond the supply chain. It's about the full gamut of the United Nations SDGs and how can we kind of leverage the resources and platforms at our disposal and collaborate with other industries in very unexpected ways, as our colleagues said earlier. And so for Vogue China, social sustainability is more so that primary focus. So for instance, we have our great traditional Chinese craftsmanship initiatives that bolster um, local supply chains and focuses on building up local Chinese artisan communities. And these are thousands of years old and kind of being able to leverage our platform to transmit their work in a more concrete way to the world through, you know, the creative giants that we're able to work with of the next generation is really key. But on inclusivity, we do similarly need to really lead by example, right, by doing, not by saying. And it's just not just about the visible appointments that give you that disproportionate kind of publicity kudos. It's really about the people in positions that are behind the scenes that are in key decision-making power. It's about the bottom up. It's about kind of opening our minds to the experiences and perspectives of people from diverse backgrounds, of young perspectives that might be challenging our industry norms. And so from a Vogue China perspective, it's not really us as an arbiter of culture, of of cultural truths, right? As leaders, we're not kind of standing at the top of the mountain saying, you know, this is what it's going to be. We're just simply a cultural curator that plays kind of a much greater institutional role to ensure that these diverse voices are not only in the room, not only at the table as a fact of, but they're actually kind of given this space to experiment, space to challenge our industry norms, space to challenge our local communities long-held views that are potentially outdated or not kind of serving the direction that we all need to be moving in. I mean, a, a simple example from a Vogue China perspective is our Vogue Film Initiative that is giving our platform to Chinese women in storytelling and into, in film to kind of tell their stories and reflections on societal issues in their lens rather than only coming from our perspective. So it's really more about concrete action, if that makes sense. Amazing. I love it. Love it. Thank you. Peace, uh, if I can turn to you, uh, you are the brains behind uh, Young, Famous and African, Netflix's first African reality show that follows a group of African entrepreneurs and A-listers who also happen to be friends. As they go about their lives in Johannesburg in South Africa, I know your path, as, uh, uh, your path to executive producer was not a conventional one, but you still made it. Uh, happen. Tell us more uh, about that journey. Um, I think something that I've always been passionate about is just celebrating remarkable Africans and having the ability uh, to create young, famous and African with my co-creator Martin Asare um, was really exciting for us because we had the opportunity to really celebrate remarkable Africans from all walks of life that were using their natural God-given talent to really impact their communities and by default, the globe. Um, So being able to tell stories using Forbes Africa over the years and now create young, famous and African and work with a team in front of the camera and also behind the camera of some of the most talented, remarkable Africans in media has been an absolute privilege and an honor. Um, And so, yes, we're very excited about the uh, global reception uh, to season one. We have season two coming out. I know that's a, a plug, but uh, we have season two coming out, which wait. we're really excited. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so we're very excited about the reception. And it's just an amazing opportunity to celebrate incredible African stories because, like this community, there are so many of us all over the world that are doing things to make a change. Excellent. I love it. Thank you, Peace. And thank you for championing the African identity. I know I'm biased, but, uh, but I, I love it. Uh, Richard, uh, you are someone that, who built a successful startup 
following the la and following the last financial uh, uh, you know the financial uh, sector collapse today close, close to collapse well, the 2008 I'm talking about okay. now it's we have another one which is <laughs> you know you know no comments on the actual uh, what's going on but we're seeing like the 16th biggest bank in the US uh, going to bankrupt and so really you know what kind of insights do you have into the new scene of startups that are going on? Uh, you know, the startup space is, is kind of one of the potentials to solve many of the world problems. And, and you're, you're solving one, and many other startups are solving also problems. And we are turning more to the social entrepreneurship part of the business. But if we have those big challenges as such, the one that you had in after 2008 of, of the financial sector, and probably we're going to have a recession. What insights or what advice do you have for, for entrepreneurs? Entrepreneurs are extremely resilient elements, otherwise they die. So we, and that's why the majority of startups die as well. Yes, but uh, many of uh, the entrepreneurs survive because they have such an idea Mm. And they're so passionate about that idea and they convince others to follow them. So we come back to the topic of leadership. Yeah. That they convince investors, employees, sometimes to give the hard sweat and sometimes work for free for months and years or very low pay because they believe in that idea. Mm. And then there is this breakthrough moment when it becomes relevant for society or because there's a breakthrough that the technology works. And so I think endurance. I think the number one trait in, 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 in entrepreneurs is endurance and hmm. also in leadership that's a key trait. Excellent. I love it. And, and uh, what's, your, what's your outlook of the future? Very bright. Very bright? I love it. Entrepreneurs, that's being a YGL. Entrepreneurs that's are optimists. <laughs> this is usually what investors like and hate about entrepreneurs because they're Excellent. optimists. Because they see the opportunity of in, in the future. I mean, we could all say, oh, we are doomed because we're over-consuming the resources of the planet, but uh, we have the technology to, to massively also reduce the carbon in, in the atmosphere. We are building machines that can suck out the CO2 out of the air. So this Love is it. the ingenuity of entrepreneurship, and, but it requires all the, the different people to come together, from politics, from investors, and then people that actually do it. Super. Peace, if I might turn to you, uh, Richard said he, he sees the outlook as very bright, and I'm sure you will say the same thing. I mean, uh, you are telling a new story with, with, with the young, famous, and African, uh, and you are presenting the continent as a vibrant, beautiful, and forward-thinking uh, continent. Uh, what was the one leadership threat you had to hone in that process to kind of change your mindset or, or, or go for a big challenge like this one? I think some of the things that uh, were highlighted earlier on in the session um, where when you are working in the capacity of a leadership, it tends to be quite a lonely, isolating journey where you're so tunnel visioned in what you're trying to achieve and your passion that you tend to move in solo and with the creation of YFA um, it was really something that I really wanted to just tell a positive story about Africa that presented an alternative perspective about the Africa that exists now um, but what was really remarkable I think what was the biggest learning curve is being able to work with some of the most talented um, exemplary Africans in media behind the scenes and realizing that no man is an island. To create real big impact and global change, it takes a community of like-minded individuals with the same passion. And I think being able to work as a team and being able to understand the skill sets and embrace the passions of the different members and what they bring to the overall vision of what you're trying to achieve was one of the biggest adjustments because now we have a community that was trying to create this huge project. And that's been a really, really big learning curve, but also a very big blessing that I think we can all um, kind of pat ourselves on the back and be happy about that we were able to work together and be able to achieve such an impactful um, content that really redefines the African narrative. Excellent, excellent. Congrats on that. Margaret, I'll turn to you, and, and as we are running out of time, I will ask you one last question. Uh, why did you say yes to us and yes to the YGL community? And what do you hope to gain from this journey? That's such an interesting question because I think 
in my whole career, I've always tried to seek out the rooms of people that I would never otherwise have ended up in um, to find people from really kind of opposing school of thought or um, different industries that I never would have had the opportunity to engage with. And so to be able to connect with a, a fresh um, cohort of fresh perspectives is so appealing to me because I think, as you all mentioned at the top of this session, there are so many really urgent and imminent issues that we're all faced with across all different industries that are going to have kind of sweeping impacts on society. But to Richard's point, I think it's so key to come to that table with optimism um, and a fierce kind of problem solving um, attitude rather than kind of the, the fear mongering or the kind of desire disaster mentality. And so to be able to look at the norms or look at the operational successes of other industries and key leaders in other industries and have this kind of eyes wide open perspective of youth who are always on the right side of history, that was immensely appealing and exciting to me. And, you know, for me, throughout my whole career, it's always been about learning experiences. So to be able to be a part of this program and kind of expose myself and challenge myself and therefore all of the work that I do um, to kind of new ways of thinking uh, and different industries that might be able to collaborate with culture and the fashion industry space that I operate in is just an immensely exciting journey that I'm very keen to embark on. Excellent. We're excited to have you. Richard, how about, how about you? What do you, you hope to gain from this journey? Create more awareness with um, senior leadership, so harnessing the network here to also create more awareness of the C-suite of large corporations. There's still, everyone knows climate change is a big issue, but they overestimate how much it would cost their own company to do something about it. And the World Economic Forum has so much data about this, and for example, only one to four percent of an additional price increase would mean a product is CO2 neutral. Why not? When I challenge most leaders with that information, they think it's 20 to 40% more. So it's massively less. And so it's, it's basically how can we get this message across faster to the top companies that can make a difference. And we already crossed the one with inflation. We, we went beyond that. So it's an, it's sometimes it's an easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. Peace, uh, how about you? What are you most looking forward uh, to learning on your YGL journey? I think one of the most um, amazing opportunities is to be part of such a powerful, impactful community of people who are really passionate about um, not only transforming our continent and the world, but also joining hands and doing it as a team and as a group collective. And so I'm really excited about the opportunity to meet more exemplary individuals from all walks of life um, and being able to see what we can create together to be able to just keep that mission and narrative going. Um, one of the main, main things I keep hearing is how you get to deal with people from all walks of life and be in rooms, as Margaret said, that you wouldn't normally be in. And for me, that is really invigorating. And I just like the opportunity to learn and to expose myself to more communities and more people and see what we can create together. Super. Thank you so much to the three of you, Margaret, Richard, and Peace for joining us today and sharing your stories. Congratulations again on being selected as Young Global Leaders. It's a powerful representative of the YGL community, and we can't wait to continue connect and learn and collaborate with all of you over the next years of your journey with us. And my last word for all the YGLs is that privilege, we should not be ashamed of it, but we should be ashamed if we don't use it for a purpose. Over to you, Kule. Thank you, Wadia, and thank you to all of our speakers. I don't know about you, but after hearing all of those incredible stories and ideas, I feel more knowledgeable about the leadership skills needed to lead in a variety of industries, and I have more appreciation for the power of community in shaping a better world. Here I will reference one of my favorite African proverbs that says, if we want to go fast, we go alone, but if we want to go far, we go together. 
Of course, the speakers we just heard from are a few of the nearly 100 changemakers in the 2023 class, and they also belong to a wider community of over 1,400 young global leaders who collaborate to address critical issues in creative and meaningful ways. And as you know, all good things must have come to an end. So with this, I will wrap up today's session. Congratulations again to all members of the class of 2023 to discover all our new members especially those creating change in a city near you visit our website younggloballeaders.org if you enjoyed today's session be sure to let us know on social media using the hashtag YGL23 to join the conversation or by tagging us on Twitter using the handle at YGL Voices or on LinkedIn by mentioning the Forum of Young Global Leaders. Thank you again and see you back here again soon.